All right, everyone, welcome back to the philosophy of art and science. As always, if you support these ventures, head over to patreon.com slash tawahido. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash t-e-w-a-h-i-d-o. You can also join the YouTube channel directly at even $1 a month. Today, I have an old friend from college, Dominic Reddix. Welcome to the program. What's up, bro? Thank you I'm for good, having bro. me. I'm really happy to be here. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. There are, I think, a number of categories, whether it's sports or wellness or even giving back to the community that we cover a lot on this program that you also are involved with in, in many ways. Two of the, the areas I remember you and I used to connect on the most were uh, basketball and dream, uh, dramatically reconstructing education through African American men. If if you want to touch on or reflect on any of those two things, uh, you know I don't have a super strict uh, way. We can carry it any way you want, but uh, I think those are two really cool topics to to start off with. And then obviously we could get into the recovery and wellness. Yeah, sounds good, bro. Well, like as soon as you said dream, like um. I just had like flashbacks, you know what I'm saying? Flashbacks, I haven't, I haven't thought about dream in a minute and that was a really good thing. Like dream, dream was a really good thing. Um, for y'all who don't know, Dramatically Reconstructing Education Through African-American Men was an organization started uh, like by black men on the, on, on the campus of Pepperdine. And, um, and, we, and we just did really cool things like in the community, for the community, we started like different scholarship funds uh, uh, we reached out to like the local uh, juvenile delinquent hall, you know what I'm saying, and invited them on the campus and just like had like a really good conversation with everybody, uh, volunteer work. We just did a lot of stuff and it was really cool. And uh, and um, and I, I remember like being in it with, uh, being being there with you, Hinoke, and like, and just, uh, and just feeling like brotherhood. You know what I mean? Like, like, like feeling um, close, regardless of like differences and regardless of like where people were from. Cause sometimes you know something like when black when when, when I actually just people period when people period just come from uh, different places but specifically I know when black people come from different places and come together sometimes there are differences mm -hmm. um, and regardless of those differences like it was it was a beautiful experience yeah the, I'll, I'll tell you a very funny anecdote about that and we'll hop back into it um, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley but uh, my parents are from Ethiopia. So cuisine wise, you know, my, the food I grew up eating was dominantly Ethiopian food. Um, you know, it wasn't Southern black food. And I remember one time, I don't know if you remember our brother Orlando, he played with me on the rugby team and he was really hyping up some jambalaya one time and he wasn't getting the adequate nonverbal response from me of like delight and joy and excitement and i kind of <laughs> knew what jambalaya was but i didn't really know what it was you know and uh julian was there one time he used to hoop with us i think you remember uh, uncle mm -hmm. jew and he yeah. stopped and he was uh you know he's funny because he was like an african-american but he was like the african specialist so he jumped in you know what i mean because he used to live with uh doug you know nigerian background and he knew he knew me too mm -hmm. And he he jumped in and he's like, no, you don't understand. This man grew up just eating African food all day. So he expressed the kind of, he bridged the gap between us because, oh, he couldn't fathom that I had no idea what he was talking about. He's like, you know, you grew up on this. Why are you pretending? Like, why are you acting brand new? <laughs> hey, you're lie, dog. Like, you're not, you're not giving me the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I knew you, you grew up in in the high desert when you were when you were at Pepperdine, were there a significant amount of people from the high desert or was it differences from people from other parts of Southern California or even other parts of, of the United States, like the Midwest or the South or where, wherever it may be? Um uh two no there are, there are three people from the high desert at Pepperdine, which was uh which was really interesting because um Two of them I went to I was actually high school with. One of them being uh, her name was Cynthia. She was a year older than me, um, of Nigerian descent, and uh, or I'm sorry, her parents were. She I believe she was born in the United States, and then uh, and then Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bizzle. Uh, she was my year, uh, and she and she went to Pepperdine with us too. And then there was one other person who went to Apple uh, Apple High, uh, named Amber, and she was real cool. But not not too many people from the desert going to going to Pepperdine like. Most of the people I met going to Pepperdine were international, uh, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, some people from LA, but it was really people from anywhere but LA at one point. Like, 
it didn't feel like a very local school, even though it was a local school. Yeah, the, it, it's interesting. I remember the two highest percentages were from California and Texas, but there were a good third of the population, I think, was international, like you said. And Pepperdine loved the international folks because they they played that full ticket. You know, they used to have this stat that at the call center that 70 plus percent of people are on some type of financial aid. Uh, the rest of that percent is the international people who are on zero percent financial aid. So that that brings to it a, a dynamic as well. Right. Not just being from a different country, but being the elites from different country of a certain socioeconomic status where financial aid is, is you know, you never filled out a FAFSA. Man, I, I, I have an anecdote. I have an anecdote. So, so I, I'll never forget, like, 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 being in a position like where I was like, uh, like financially, like not doing the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like, like, like not me or my family. So, like, I remember being like, hey, like, pops, I need, I need, you know, what I'm saying, like, a few hundred bucks. You know, what I'm saying, like, to, to to clear this so I can register for my classes, and like stressing out. You know, what I'm saying, being being at being at one stop, just stressing out, like, ah. And this, I'll never forget this dude walked in with like with his uh with his Louis backpack and he wants to go, he wants to go like register for classes too. And um, but he had he had none of his tuition paid yet. And they were like, uh like they were like, oh well sir, you have to you, well, well, your tuition hasn't been paid, so therefore you can't have a like, therefore you can't register for your classes. He's like, Well, how much? He's like, Well, it, well sir, it's the full tuition. And he goes, Okay, what do you guys take checks? Mm. And and I, I remember like kind of looking over at me like, like just like like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's different that's yeah. different yeah so like so, so be able to see that witness it like in and being that type just, just having people from different socioeconomic uh places and different places in the world it was interesting it was yeah that's right there's a lot of talk of diversity and inclusion these days and i think um people jump to race and sexuality but the the class thing the money that is <laughs> that's salient too so that that's interesting you you experienced it but but you were saying one of the ways we diverged a little but one of the ways that you said that you loved dream was the fact that people whatever you know their background maybe diverse black peoples were gathering together hustling around um <laughs> acting like uber eats and postmates before it happened i remember i ran and brought some uh 200 was it 200 i think uh, waffles and 400 wings to do open mic event that we were running way before Roscoe's was uh, <laughs> delivering yeah. stuff. But I, I, I remember uh, I was like in the second batch of leadership. It was, it was the people in the year before me and the batch before me that kind of started the organization with some people younger, I think in between you and I, and, and y'all, y'all were kind of the next generation and i don't think it's continued this far out 10 years later but i think it continued for at least one or two years i, I graduated in 2012 i think it continued a little bit after i was there I, and i think this is an important point for anyone like you know wanting to get into leadership and organization i think it taught me the practice of it more than any theory of it i think taught me a lot um exactly. but what what do you think of that kind of succession uh, of of the leadership because I like in the beginning you're just kind of a member right and uh, slowly you you moved into I imagine more leadership roles within the organization anything you could talk about that that experience because I think those those kind of in between years are very interesting yeah so like um so I graduated in 2014 and um and and when I stopped uh, being in dream it was because like I went to go play basketball you know what I'm saying like like so I so I I, I had a successor, um, but before that, you know, so I, I was just a member. I was just a member, and I remember like being like happy and passionate, kind of doing it because I was like, man, this is like, like I feel like one, I was part of a community, but two, what we're doing is cool, like it's good, like it's it's actually really good, and it feels good. It feels aligned to who it is I want to be. So that was really cool. But then I, what I also thought was dope was like when they saw like like Justin, uh, Justin Clare, um, when when he saw like my passion. And you saw like you know saying like who I was and what I what I was trying to do. He was like, oh no, you you could, you could be a core member for sure. Like no, nah, like you you sh you should you should be a part of like the people who are like making this thing like happen and making it work. I thought that was amazing. So, uh, but the only thing I think that was well, I think the downfall the downfall of it all was like uh like not not having predecessors. Like I'm sorry, not not training. Like, like I don't think like we. 
we trained uh, like our predecessors like correctly or with enough time. Because I, I know when I was presented the opportunity to like go play basketball for like the team, it was like, oh, well, I'm gonna go do that. You know, like, I'm gonna go do that. And like, ah, yeah, like it's a, I only have three months until school starts. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know somebody who can do it, but I can't really sit with them and go through the meetings and you know, really teach. Right, like I, I couldn't really teach, and uh, and I, I can I can only assume that happened with a few other chair, uh, with a, like you know, what I'm saying like chair members, and which is why I think it, it probably failed. Um, yeah, and it's it's good, there. it's good to reflect on that um, because uh, you know you bring up another point like that I think is helpful for people to think about. Some people try to become Superman or Superwoman, and they want to be everything to everybody but at the end of the day when we deal with reality we're dealing with limited options and you kind of breezed over it but you had an incredible opportunity like i only know a few people who did what you did i know chloe did it with track there was a dude who was my year i think his name was dom too although i may be forgetting his name maybe i'm wrong about that but and and then you i've seen it dom. too it, it was right it was Don. Yeah, he was a. Uh, yeah, Don. Also- yeah, with the end, with the end. That's right. Thank you. Uh, and, and so you walked onto the team. Like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you had something before, uh, but it, in my understanding, you were athletic, but you came into to the school for academics and you walked onto the team, which is not something that's <laughs> easy to do. Like, you were hooping with us on the Sundays uh, where we would regularly play pickup ball. And it's funny, you know, we see each other on the same court, but then you leveled up, like <laughs> you, you made it to D1. Like, that's no joke. Like Pepperdine has been to the tournament and I, it's, they've only seemed to be better since, uh, since I was in college. Likewise, bro. Like, uh, like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like what's, uh, once some thing, once some things change, you know, it's like there, there, there were a few changes that were made. Like they just started, they just started doing well, um, it, it get better and better each year. But, uh, it honestly, it was, it was a great opportunity. I, I, I didn't necessarily have a D1. I don't have D1 offers or anything like that. I, I, I got looked at by one, maybe one D2 and three D3 colleges going out of uh, high school. Um, I was I, I really wanted to go to the East Coast to Rochester or to Oberlin um, in Ohio. They were really cool schools. I really liked the basketball there, but uh, but there were just like a few like logistical details that just made it like. That just made it difficult. It was like, yo, like this is—it doesn't seem like this should be this difficult to just want like go play basketball. Um, so, I, I and because of what's going on in my family, my my parents had just split. My brother was only like 13, uh, 14. So I decided like to stay, in the, I, I decided to stay home. I decided to stay in California and just go to Pepperdine. So like two and a half, you know, it's like two, you know, like two hours away from where I grew up. So I was like, all right, I'll just stay out here. And it's, it's, it was a top fifty school, so I was like, I'm not losing. I'm by the beach. I'm not losing. <laughs> so, uh, so like you know, when I when I got there, it was like, all right, no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep hooping. I'm gonna keep working on my game just because I love basketball. And uh, and as I and and as I as I grew and I I gained 15 pounds in one year. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, <laughs> I, I got, yeah, I, you, I got the you were swollen for a sec. Yeah, I was I was getting big. I was like 188. Like that was a, I was the largest I ever got, and I was I was lifting. I was hooping, and and the, and the coach saw me. And was like, hey, uh, come through. You look like you could you could hang. And you were dunking at your height. You were dunking. I got like two dunks off. I'm not going. I'm not going to I got like two dunks off. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was rim grazing. You know what I'm saying? Just a little rim grazer. <laughs> you got to do that little thing where you uh, make it look like a dunk. You do a layup and then grab the rim. That was my trick. <laughs> Man, I'm cool. I'm cool being. I'm just cool being on the ground now. It's funny, I'll, I'll be at the court and, uh, and, and the kids will be like, hey, Teach, can you, can you dunk? I'm like, bro, I don't even try no more. I'm trying to keep my knees. Yeah, no, that's right. It's it's super high impact. Um, that that that's, a, that's a good segue. I'm actually, we're both teaching right now. I think I'm less official than you. I'm a substitute teacher. So I've done long-term and short-term contracts, you know, as short as one day and as long as like four or five months but we are around the youth the children a lot and they uh, they're able to connect to you more i think because um not just the fact that you're relatively young you know but you are someone who 
knows a piece of the culture in in terms of like even if you don't want to go dunk right now or even attempt it you've you've lived that life so what is it like uh do, do you hoop with them at all or you don't even hoop with them oh yeah yeah. Oh yeah. So, so pre -pand pre pandemic, I was uh like at, the, at my middle school. I work at a middle school. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I play with them all the time. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't like put them in the dirt or anything like that. But I would definitely have a good time. Um, yeah. These past couple of weeks, you know, what I'm saying I've, uh, I've I've gone to the park where my um where my high schoolers like my former students who are now in high school. Uh, like I'll, I'll go up there and go hoop, and they'll be up there playing soccer or playing basketball. And I'll just go visit and, and get some buckets. So. I still do, yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's my thing. <laughs> I, I I really enjoy being a part of the community, being like, hey, no, hey, hey, wait, y'all gonna go? Who? Let me, I'll, I'll show up too. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not just a teacher. I'm a human being. So let me be a human being with you. That's good. You're not too distant. And and I know people, people play that um, differently because, um, you know, we're mandated reporters, and there's so many things, especially like outside of the school setting that that could go wrong but um yeah, it, tricky. It, it, it it certainly could get tricky but it's it's good that you're you're airing on on the side of that the mercy the proximity like the the closeness with them so you, you brought up a, a good point um i i don't know at what point you got introduced to it i remember back in 2010 i had a buddy do it and then i i followed him actually i think he did it in 09 or 08 i followed up and 2010, uh, I picked up yoga from the Beachbody series, P90X, which was popular at the time. And it was just one out of the kind of seven day workouts. It had a 90 minute routine uh, once a week. And I probably did the 90 minutes maybe three times in my life. I got too lazy. Uh, it's always easier in a class than by myself. I, I do probably 15, 30 minutes on a good day, 45 minutes. But you really, whenever you picked up yoga, um you you became like a, a a yogi so how did how did you get put onto it and then how did you you know keep getting better and better at it, I, it it's like artwork the 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 contortions you're able to to put yourself mm -hmm. in and that 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 you uh post a lot like no seriously like it's uh it's art with your own body too so it's very personal yeah um Ooh, I even want to get into that, but like the, the the genesis of it came, I would say, uh, from 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 my boy Jared. He was a he was a part of the posse program that uh, that came from DC. Um, he, oh, like, uh, yeah, I think uh, like he 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 had, he had came over and he was like staying the weekend, um, you know, just, just, just staying a couple of days just, uh, before he like went somewhere else, and he was like, uh, and he invited me to go to a yoga class in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. It was a it was a yoga works and it was, and, and he, and he's a yogi. So, uh, you know, I remember seeing him and being like, you know, just walking and being like, yo, what's this nigga? What are you, what, man, that's crazy. I, right, hey, do your thing, partner. Do you? Yeah. And um, I'll give you a quick aside about Jared because Jared's my boy. Uh, and he's, he's funny. He's, uh, he's not a big pod guy, but maybe I'll try to get him on the pod too. Um, he was at one time a serious weightlifter and sprinter. And mm -hmm. I remember he gave all that up to become a, a yogi and a pescatarian. And he told me pretty much he does boxing routines. Uh, and I don't even think he spars, but maybe he does. But like boxing, randomly capoeira, uh, which is like the, the Brazilian kind of kickboxing off the ground, the Eddie Gordo for anyone who played Tekken back in the day, and then yoga. Mm -hmm. And it shook me because the fact that you can be in such good shape just doing these things went counter to a lot of maybe the meathead culture and the gym at, at Pepperdine, which is where I, you know, I began lifting in, in high school, but I, I lifted a lot in college too. So that that's very interesting that that <laughs> you recognized it was weird, but you were curious and open minded enough to to get into it. Yeah, bro. Like, I, uh, uh, like especially being younger. Like I remember being younger, and I, I feel like I've always been very open minded and like uh, willing to accept other people for who they are. But uh, but I always knew when something was for me and when it wasn't. But like him being like, hey, you want to go? And me just looking around and be like, I got, I got time, let's go. But I showed up, bro. And and it wasn't, a, it wasn't a regular class. I walked in and I promise you, I saw about three or four people in their 50s and 60s because they have all like gray hairs, long hair. Like 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 do, doing the things that you see me doing now, like the like the, the, the presses, you know what I'm saying? Like 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 presses, like, you know, and like in and, and like one-handed things and I, I I saw the strength and the flexibility in these people, and I was just like, "Whoa! I don't know if I should be here." 
Like I don't like and no and no knowing who Jerry was as a yoga, so I don't even know if I should be here. And then the teacher coming up to me and like it or me me vocalizing that to the teacher and she being like, It's okay, come as you are. Come as you are, it's completely fine. I want you to do what you can and I want you to set an intention in your mind of exactly what it is that you want from this. And from that moment on, like I'll, I'll never forget looking around and like and, and looking at, and looking at other people and be like, ah, oh, ah, oh, what am I gonna? And then it went away and it became, it was like me and God, you know, it, it, it felt like prayer. It felt like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, like, like the level of concentration and peace and uh, intention. And after that, I didn't look back. After that, I did not look back because I hadn't felt, because uh, I, I feel that when I hoop. But it takes, you know, but, but, but it takes a few of those like, of those plays or it takes a few of those like, a few of those reps to be like, ooh, you know, to really get that going. But with yoga, it, it, it touched my soul. And ever since I, I have to, I have to do, like have to. And so you signed up for classes immediately or you try to bootleg it off YouTube? Like what, what, what did you do? Like, how did you get into it practically? <laughs> I was, uh, so, so, so practically I was, I, would, I didn't have the money to keep going to yoga works. Like, you know what I'm saying? In Santa Monica, I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, I was, you know, so I was just a broke nigga like, li like trying to live in, like who's living in the Valley. Like, you know what I mean? So like, I was, uh, so I, so, so when I moved, I had to move from Calabasas, like leaving, like basically leaving college and get, like not having that, uh, that financial backing, I had to move to the Valley with my friend from high school. Um, and from there, I just like started looking at, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't watch, I didn't really watch YouTube videos, but I, I, I looked at a lot of Instagram. I saw a lot of, you know, saying like, like the yogis that I liked. And then I just started trying things on my own. Um, wow. I started trying things on my own, especially when I lost my job or no, I'm sorry, when I quit my job uh, as a personal trainer, um, at this, at this one gym, cause I didn't, I didn't like the way they were treating me. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was broke. Uh, I, I really couldn't go anywhere. My roommates were, my other roommates were working. So I was just kind of at the house. I was kind of at the house, like sad and a little bit low. And it gave, and it, and it was only thing that gave me life. So I just tried different things. I was like, oh, can I do that? Oh, I can do that. Oh, I can't do that yet. Well, if I do this more, I know that I can get there. You know what I'm saying? And, that's, and then I started applying like my sports medicine knowledge to yoga, which really helped. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that because I'm I'm excited about the way that you did it in such a self-exploratory manner. There's um there's research that Malcolm Gladwell popularized that talks about how people have different thresholds. So mm -hmm. different people could know that something is, you know, quote unquote the right thing to do, or even let's say like make it, you know, more down to earth, just a beneficial thing for someone to do. And if they don't have like 10 of their friends doing that thing, they won't do it. Whereas some people, they need five people. All you had was one homie, Jared, who did it that you actually practically knew. And yet you, you didn't even have avenues around you. People usually have to be dragged. I, I don't know if you've you know convinced other people to, to begin. I've seen a, a couple uh, old Pepperdine waves that uh, you've put on the gram before that you've, you've gotten them to do at least one day or, or, or one, one sort of training exercise. But Talk to us about that that exploration and and how sports medicine helped that as well. Um, they, fi finding my body was um, was a really fun journey. Like it, it, it's, 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 it still is. Like it's, it still is because I, I go through ups and downs. Like it's, it's not all. It's not a linear. It's not a linear growth at all. Like it'll be like this and like this and like this and like down and here again and plateau. So like it's 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 a really fun journey because like you never you never know where your consistency is gonna be, you know what I mean? Like because a lot because life happens, you know what I'm saying? Life happens. So like uh, I want to answer the question fully, but I forgot part of the question. So like oh I know you no me. no worries. Let I could even rephrase it. Like to me, I'm excited by the fact that you were guided by your curiosity because I think that some of the best learning I'm, I'm super interested in education which is why i'm a sub um you know I, I have a lot of thoughts about you know what i think is the factory model of schooling which is the predominant kind of mode and i've experienced many different types of education but i think a lot of education happens outside of schools which is a funny thing for a guy who teaches in schools to say but i think there's ways you can sneak it into the schools as well 
And oh. I, I see that in you, like, like you're a teacher, but it seems like you're the ideal student too, because you pursued this thing. I'm not hearing like, oh, I wanted to dunk better. So I loosened up these particular muscles like that. And that's a legitimate goal too. But it just seems like you were curious about whether you could do the various moves. And so you followed your curiosity. And that that's something that's exciting. So I just wanted you to talk about that exploring of, of your curiosity. Or if you had if you had any other goals, like, you know, were you just going with the flow or were there any goals while doing the yoga? Um, yeah, like I, I, I would, I would definitely set little goals. Like once, once I realized, oh, like I actually have some control of my body, and I kind of, and I kind of understand a little bit more. It was like, all right, I want to be able to get my foot to my head. Okay, cool. I want to be able to get my foot behind my head. I want to be able to do a handstand without a wall. Like all these little things are like things that I'm like. Well, a couple of those I'm still working on, which mm -hmm. is really, which, which makes it fun. Um, it, it's, it's almost like I'm working for a degree that has no, you know what I'm saying, that has no end, but like it's, but the journey is more satisfying than the, than the degree ever would be. Um, so with that said, like with my sports medicine degree, um, like, you know what I'm saying, like I, I was able to learn, I was, I was able to learn about things like neuromuscular adaptations to exercise and how specific, how specificity will get me to that goal. So if I want to, if I want to get my legs in my head, I need to practice things mm. that will get my leg to my head. You know what I mean? Like I'm gradually I, 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 and incrementally. Yeah, exactly. Progressive overload, specificity, uh, learn, and, and learning the different things that happen and how to recover. Um, recovery is big. Uh, nutrition big. Um, all talk, of the, talk, all, talk all to those. what what is recovery? Because some people consider yoga itself a kind of form of recovery. Are you, you talking about saunas, cold plunge, literally just resting or walking, or what? What are you talking about in terms of recovery? I think I, I think both active and passive. I think mm -hmm. when it comes to passive, like sometimes you just need to sit your ass down. <laughs> like so, like so, so, sometimes that's it. Sometimes you really just got to sit down and really rest your body, rest your mind. I think sometimes it's like, well, if you're a little, you know, sometimes you're sore, yeah, go for a walk. Sometimes that does mean doing, uh, you know, what I'm saying like a really light, a really light yoga, uh, yoga stretch or yoga session. Um, but there are, there's different types of yoga, right? Sometimes you're working mm -hmm. on flexibility. Sometimes it's power. Sometimes it's endurance. Right. So, um, so it kind of just all depends. Like, yeah. um, my, like, yeah, I, I think my favorite, uh, like my favorite form of recovery is after, after going hard, making sure that my nutrition is solid. So I'm getting hella water, making sure I'm getting plenty of antioxidants, making sure I'm, uh, you know, just getting enough carbs to like really replenish myself and then making sure I'm getting a good deep stretch, good deep stretches. Like before bed, I think are really, really good for recovery. Um, yeah, like, cause, cause even at even at twenty nine, like, uh, like, which is not old, but like, I, you know, like, uh, I hear a lot of people like talk, you know, really talk about how their body's starting to change around twenty seven, yeah. and how things are just aren't moving the same, and things are uh, this and that. And I understand, and, and I know that aging is, you know, as someone who studied sports medicine, I know that aging is a real factor when it comes to uh, your ability. That's However, right. So, yeah, go ahead. Think, go ahead. Uh, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think your age is the end all be all, because like I said, I saw. I saw these 60, 70 year olds doing yoga that you know, like, like, like performing, like, you know, like, like really tapping in, connecting their minds to their body and were healthy. I saw it. And because, and because I was able to see an example of that, because I, you know, because I'm able to see like, uh, like some of these basketball players who are living like, oh, you know, like older lives and still be able to play, like, like seeing LeBron play the way he is at 36. Mm -hmm. I know it's possible to like take care of your body in a particular way uh, for longevity. And I feel like yoga is just a really good part, a really good way to make that happen. Uh, yes, and I, you said you triggered me with one of my favorite words: longevity, living long and and living well. I I do jujitsu, which some people kind of jokingly call involuntary yoga. And <laughs> my teacher's grandpa, he passed away at like ninety four, and even to his last day, he was training. So I absolutely believe that. And and on Twitter, I always see people posting these images of people from the seventies who are in their thirties and they look hurt, you know, and I'm not even talking about like aesthetic, like normal aesthetic appeal, but like in terms of the way their body was worn out. And it just seems like we're getting more and more information about all of these things and incorporating it. So you touched on nutrition a, a little bit, but if, if you'd like to expand on that, I know you, ha you had quite a, 
a dietary change, right? You didn't you didn't grow up vegan, I imagine, or plant based, nah, grew, grew, or how you describe it. Nah, nah, I didn't. I grew up with soul food. I grew up with uh, with delicious uh, uh, like Mexican food, and Salvadorian food, and China. I grew up in everything. Um, I have to say this first: Ethiopian food is my favorite food in the world. Let's go. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it and I had to make it dramatic because it is my favorite. Um, especially now that I am plant based. But uh but yeah, like uh, so I, I took a I took a few classes. Um I took a <laughs> I took a nutrition class, a religion class. And when I say religion, it was a it was a it was a religion class, but it was based on sustainability. Mm-hmm. And um and our, you know and, and, being, and having a sustainable earth and how we as people have a responsibility to the earth. So I was taking those, yeah, I was taking those classes, and I was also uh, going to my professor's house for dinner um, because he, he he would invite us for a, a combo, a convocation, um, and 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 all of those things happening at once. I didn't see, I didn't see this coincidence. I didn't see this coincidence. Um, Whenever I feel like whenever 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 the universe and whenever the Lord like like just like like speaks to me in multiple signs like kind of at once I I know it's time to listen. So that was my that was that was my wake up call. I, I saw I saw a few films. I read a lot of books. Um, I, I hung around some animals, and then uh and then it, and then the decision became easy. At first, I was a pescatarian uh, for I think three or four months. Like like as soon as, soon as college was over. Uh, and I was like, I'm on. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm gonna really do this. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat like uh, chicken or, or fish anymore. Or, or I'm sorry, chicken or, or beef or pig. But then eventually, I was like, bro, I don't want to eat anything with a face. And then after that, it was like, I actually don't. I, I really like, I really like vegetables and fruit. It's, it's not even that I, I don't want to do anything else. It's like, no, this, this makes me feel amazing mm-hmm. at all times. And. And because of that, like, it's like, I might as well stick with it. And, and, and now it's not even a, it's, it's become so habitual that it's not even conscious, if I'm being honest. It's like, it's like oh, no, I know I'm going to go uh, grab my five fruits in the morning. That's going to be my breakfast. Like, I well, know see, this, this is where I want to ask you, because uh, in both of these situations, in terms of the tr- nutrition and in terms of the yoga, again, it showed an open-mindedness to, as a fully grown adult who's graduated college, make a decision that's like life-altering. Very few people make life altering decisions once they're, you know, grown ass men. So it's, it, I appreciate the, the conviction of that. One of the things, cause it, you know, I've, I've messed around with, um, various, um, diets as well. And I, actually the Ethiopian church mandates more days out of the year than not to be vegan or plant-based. So it's it's funny, Ethiopian food like is great for carnivores or it's also great for plant-based people and they separate those. There's like a stark separation. So you don't even have to be worried about your plate getting mixed because they intentionally uh, do that in, in most restaurants. But one of the things I've run into and I'm wondering if you ran into is like, what about when you're going to family's house and friend's house and you're in transition to this new way of eating, did you get people trying to get you to like break your new norms that you were establishing? Uh, now, nah, when it came to family and friends, I'm gonna be honest. Like, if, if, I think the first year and a half, I just got jokes. It was all jokes. It'd be like, oh, hey, 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 hey y'all got any grass? Y'all got any grass for cousin over here? You know, I'm so saying like, like just, just the cra- like the craziest jokes and like, uh. Yeah, like from, from cousins, aunties, but then after like year, I'm, t- I'm telling you, like after year two, they were like, "Hey, you really, hey, you really serious about that? Like you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you, hey, 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 so what's up? What's uh, what, what do you be eating? How, how do you do that?" Um, one 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 of my uh, one of my cousins, uh, one of my cousins really started adopting a adopting a diet for her, for her health. Um, not because of, like you know anything like uh, you know, not not because of obesity, but um, you know what I'm saying for 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 other reasons and. And she she's made like a lifestyle change, so it, so it's cool. Uh, fast forward now, and I show up to Thanksgiving, or I show up to Christmas, or I show up to you know whatever family event, and there's a and there's a veggie section. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's, 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 there's like it'll be roasted veggies, it'll be like little uh, little little veggie casseroles. Uh, my my mom will make these cool little desserts and like you know like uh, in, in buffalo uh, buffalo cauliflower. 
Brussels sprouts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just, they just, they just hook me up now. They, like, they, they, they fully hook me up. So like, I don't have to like necessarily miss out on having a family event or have to eat before. Uh, but I can just come and have literally the exact same food seasoned all the same way, mm. but just on my veggies. And and it still be fire. Like my like you know what I'm saying, the yams with the potato salad is still it's still great to be. That's right. Yeah, so, yeah yams like, are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. um I still don't know the difference between yams and sweet potatoes. So someone's gonna have me to either. advise me. <laughs> I feel like it's the same thing. I'll be honest with you. I think they are the same thing. I think that black people just call them yams. I think that's the <laughs> see. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, that's good. You know, Ethiopians, uh, I had a friend who was surprised the other day was having some Ethiopian food and they didn't know we eat collard greens too. So that's the one, the kind of connection, um, collard greens that I, that I do have with uh, American food here. But uh, no, that's, that's good that you were iron willed enough where you know people understood it wasn't a fad you weren't just following a fad like you're like no this is a new way of doing things and i'm gonna be super intentional about what goes in and out of my body so i i like that you you touched um i think we're getting near to the end but we you touched on something uh, a couple times i want to make sure we we cover and it's uh you know one of my favorite topics as well religion and especially as it relates to to yoga i've talked about this with jared before and i know he's he's um certainly uh less religious than, than some of my other friends but he's open to to hearing about things like that and when he was giving me the lay of the land this is very different because you did this at home and i did i did yoga at home too when i when i first started doing it right with with videos that i, I was playing from p90x he told me he did a lot of stuff in the studios and there's this weird, I think, hyper, hyper conservative, narrow, almost fundamentalist Christianity that thinks of yoga as demonic or thinks that to, to put it, you know, so more softly, it's inherently linked to the Eastern religions, to Hinduism, or, you know, the sort of cultural environment that it came out of. And again, I'm a martial arts practitioner. The martial arts are heavily linked with Eastern religions too, but there is, you know, a, a secular or non, you know, uh, Buddhist or Shinto way of doing martial arts. You don't have to do those. Those things aren't necessarily combined. I wanted to, to get your take on, um, you know, Christianity and, and, and yoga. Do you view these things as compatible incompatible are people crazy when they say that I, I i think a lot of those people are coming from a lack of knowledge but at the same time you know i have been told that in the studios there is kind of a, a religious element to it um but i don't know how much of it you're allowed to co-sign or if it's like a buffet where you get to have whatever you want to have and you can discard whatever you, you want to discard it's honestly a really good question brother because i think uh i i <laughs> I, I, I feel like I've had very similar conversations with uh, with religion and science, and mm -hmm. can they co can they coexist? And, I, and and ultimately, I think personally, I say yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like they, I feel like they wouldn't if they didn't. You know what I mean? Um, I think that because uh, I'll, I'll never forget, like you know, like I said, like I remember doing yoga at home, and then somebody trying to tell me uh, essentially that was like, uh, like kind of like devil worshiping or worshiping idols and false gods, and I was like, man. I'm getting a workout in. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Like that, yeah. that sounds. I feel like if that was my intention, and it, like okay, um, but I now now, now yes, there are different like especially especially now that I've done some reading. Like there are there are definitely different parts of yoga and, and Hinduism that like uh that have nothing to do with asanas. Asanas mm -hmm. are the move, right? A lot of everything else does have to do with uh either with, you know what I'm saying, with like reading and text or uh, like the different like rituals and like prayer and things like that, right? Which are, you know, which are linked to the religion. Um, but it's very clear that the asanas are the asanas and that there's a particular intention to have when you're doing the asanas. But I think that's like, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of similar to like, uh, like, like practicing in Sunday school, like what would Jesus do and in role playing? You know what I'm saying? Like when you're doing the saunas, like and, and you're having to, and you're having to persevere through like a shit, like your arm is shaking and having to remember, okay, what is my intention? 
remember to slow yourself down and breathe, right? And be able to take that in life. It's, it's, I think I think it's kind of very similar, at least, at least in my experience. In it. No, I so, I, um, I, ap I appreciate that. There's a difference if someone is you know, doing a warrior's pose or sun salutation while burning a ca uh, you know, burning a candle to the, to the image of, you know, the deity, the deities as revealed in Eastern religions versus like you said, you're doing movements in your room and you're not thinking about that. Like, I love your focus on intention and a big, you know, a, a big kind of uh, enemy that I, I beat up a lot is uh, Greek philosophy or, or Platonism. And I think, when people mix their Christianity, that was that, that's when it gets confused. Like they try to essentialize things. They try to say this thing is inherently good and this thing is inherently bad or evil. But the what I'm getting from you is is what I often talk about, this idea of functionality. It's like, how how is it functioning in your life? What is your intention? What is your attitude? You know, what are you thinking about? It never even crossed your mind until somebody else insinuated it. I, I don't think there's a, a way of like, unintentionally or accidentally, you know, worshiping false gods and idols. So, or devil worshiping, like, I feel like there's gotta be some in, in, in intent yeah, in there. Yeah, so <laughs> I think we're on yeah, the yeah, same yeah. page in that mm -hmm. regards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, like it's the internet, like, like what is the internet good? Is it bad? Or is it, or, or, or what, what you know, is it's what my, what is my intention with the internet? That you know, that, that that's that's what it is. I, I think I think uh, I think our intentions have a lot. I think our intentions are, are are a lot bigger than we think sometimes. I think our follow through is even more important. But I think our intentions and, and and what it is that we intend to do, intend to think, what's happening internally and inherently, I think that's very very big. A hundred percent. And you know, as we're getting older. To, to break down the category of internet further, right? Internet, you know, Gary V, entrepreneur that I follow a lot, he often says, you know, the internet now means the various social media. And I've seen, you know, I've personally done it myself and I had to fight against it myself. It began with me for Snap and it ended up with, with TikTok, but I've seen people try to say like Snap chat or TikTok itself as a medium, I'm too old or, it's too jittery or it's not for me. It's not for that. And it's fascinating because there's so many millions of people uh, on these apps. And it's not saying that there's no legitimate reason, you know, not to do it. Like certainly, you know, TikTok is backed by the Chinese government. So people can have different opinions on that. And we've seen uh, folks like LeBron and John Cena fold to that. So people could make up legitimate arguments, I think, for not using any particular medium. But one of the things that they forget is what the point you just made. The internet is a tool. Any of these things are a tool. And the tool, you know, doesn't have a mind of its own. It's an inanimate object. We are the animate beings that that animate these tools that that use them in various ways. So I, I appreciate that that we see that in a in a similar manner. Is there anything that we haven't covered or things um that that you wanna plug? I, I know. I know you make music as well. Are there places that you would like to point people to to check that out? And and maybe if you want to give them some insight or intro to what type of music they could expect to you. I'm sure by getting to know your persona in in any of these various categories as well that that'll whet their appetite. I appreciate that, bro. All right. Well. Well. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean. You want to find me? I'm Dominic Reddix. Like my, my I, I, there's no alias. This is my first and last name. Uh, I'm on all DSPs, title, uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, um, and and it's it, it, it's a pretty eclectic mix. I got I got some like I got some hard, you know, what I'm saying like 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 kind of revolutionary hip hop where I'm just talking about black stuff. I got songs where I'm just talking about straight love. I got songs talking about depression. I got songs talking about. Uh, Expressing yourself as a as a boy, but you know, saying feeling suppressed. I, I I really got songs all over. But right now, right now, I'm working on a project called uh, the Odyssey, which I plan to release this summer, and it it's it's a vibe. It's it's and it's honestly the best music I've made, in my opinion, as far as energy, as far as consistency, and as far as uh, tone. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm there, really there weren't 
many books that I liked that were required reading, but one of them was actually the ancient Greek text, the Odyssey. Is there any relation to that story or is it you just like that particular word? Yeah, bro. Okay, so uh, so when pandemic started, um, a couple months in, you know, you know what I'm saying, like uh, my roommates and I, we had a rule, like, you know, we weren't going to like leave the crib too much. You know, we weren't going to go see our significant others or anything like that. So, uh, so I got to the point where I was like, man, I'm, I feel like I legit just feel like I'm on a, a deserted island. And, and from there, like, I just started making music. From there, you know, I like that, that was the idea of being, you know what I'm saying, of being alone and deserted on an island, but being content because I have solitude within myself and I have, I, and I do have my, uh, I have my hobbies and I have my connection to the earth and to, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the, like the lower, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I have my connection, so I'm okay. But I still, I'm still, I'm still with my love. So that was the idea. I just, it, uh, and, and this is called, uh, and it's called Odyssey because it, it's, a, it's a real adventure. Um, like, if, if, like, yeah, if, if you listen to it, uh, it's only four songs long, but like when you listen to it, you feel like you're on a, you feel like you're on an island adventure. You feel like you're on the ocean, just kind of cruising, looking around and being like, oh, look at that, that tribe. Oh, wow, look at them. You know what I mean? And it, it feels like an adventure. So yeah, like Homer's Odyssey for sure had a, uh, had some influence just because of the idea of an adventure. I like that. I like that. The adventure, the exploration has been, I think, a common thread and, and motif through throughout a lot, like you're fundamentally an adventurer or an explorer. And uh, I like to fancy myself one too, in, in some ways. Any Anything else, any last uh, thoughts that you'd like to, maybe, maybe I think YouTube has a lot of, uh, and this is going to show up in different audio platforms as well. But I think a lot of podcast listeners are curious, but there's a difference between a, a producer and a consumer. And I think the final difference is that when we consume way more than, or when we don't produce at all, um, I think it's because of a certain uh, proclivity or tendency to, to be a fence sitter. Is there anything you could do to get somebody off the fence and into adventure more and to exploration more? Obviously, they're going to have to listen to your music to get that, that sense of adventure mm -hmm. from you. But is there anything you could do to give them a polite nudge off the fence that they're sitting on? Yeah, bro, like this last year was probably one of the hardest years, like in, in you know what I'm saying, like in, in, at, least, at least in hu uh, in human history in the last 100 years. You know what I mean? As far as everybody in the world is concerned, uh, nothing's guaranteed. I've had, I've, I've personally known six people in the, uh, within the last year um, that, have, that have passed, including my cousin. Oh my it it would have been one, it, it'll be one year tomorrow. It'll be one year tomorrow that uh, the day he passed. He was like my, he's my age, he was my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's my guy. He lived life. Um, he, he wanted to go to Japan, he went. He wanted to go to Germany, he went. He wanted to go to Mexico on a weekend, he went. He wanted to talk to some girl, he went. He did it. You know, he wanted, to, he, wanted to, he wanted to be a photographer, he became one. He wanted to become a weightlifter and a bodybuilder, he became one. Uh, and then he passed. And it was, and, and, and the beautiful thing about that is like, it, it, it let me know that you ain't here forever, nigga. You gotta go. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go. Like this, you, you can't you can't just sit like yet yeah, like yes, you need moments, like I said, but just to begin this. Is that sometimes you recover, you gotta sit your ass down. But when you're not recovering, I think it's time to, to live. You gotta feel. You gotta feel. And it's way better to feel like that that little bit of anxiety, a little bit of I don't know. It's way better to feel that and keep going with your goal than to not do nothing at all. So that, so yeah, I, I think that's what I would say to somebody who's a little bit on the fence, like, oh, I don't know, should I? Yes, do it. You know what I'm saying? You want to dye your hair a little bit? Do it. You want to grow your hair? Do it. If you, if you want to do something, try. Yeah. Because you, you got to be able to sleep with yourself you know, at night. You know what I mean? You're going to be able to sleep when you're 40 if you, if you didn't do it. Or you're gonna be able to sleep good knowing that hey, I did it and I tried my best, even if you fail. Okay. 
That's beautiful. Thank you again for coming on the program, Doc. Bro, thank you for having me. And uh, the last thing I want to say is I appreciate you. I really appreciate you and your dedication to everything that you've become. Like, I remember, like, I remember just be, you know, being in college, being like, man, like, like Hennox is cool, dude. You know, those basketball, he's Ethiopian, and he, you know, he speaks some hard. He's a cool guy. But like, you really like, and I, and I always knew you like to think. I always knew you like to study. Right? I knew you. I knew you love philosophy, but to see how you've created an entire life around that now, bro. You, like you have this platform, like you know, say so you have a you have a real position in the church. Like you're, you're doing it. I'm proud of you. Thank you. That that means a lot. Like, for real, as <laughs> there are a lot of newer people, but uh, even even if we've mostly just been in in the social media, and not in real life. In a minute, you know, uh, we've known each other in that way for over a decade now. So yeah. I appreciate that. Congratulations on your marriage too. That's, that's big. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is the first podcast episode post marriage. So you got that, that blessing. I took some time off. <laughs> <laughs>